Hey everyone, good evening and welcome to this episode of the Better Together podcast. Uh, this is a video podcast. My name is Barb Bruce, and I want to welcome you if you are joining the Better Together podcast for the first time. I, if For those of you who are familiar with my regular podcast, it's usually audio only. Uh, but during the pandemic season, I decided to have a little fun and move over to a video format. So welcome if this is the first time that you're joining joining us. And during this series, I wanted to have an opportunity to, to talk about some topics that were, are related to the real issues that we're facing in life. The whole idea behind Better Together is that we talk about those real issues in the place of finding hope, help, as well as the practical next steps so that we can all get better together. I know that's a challenge for where we're at in life right now. And in fact, it's some of those challenges that inspired today's topic. I was looking online over the last few weeks, and I noticed that there were a number of articles about uh, family situations, uh, situations such as custody issues that were impacted by the pandemic, uh, situations where co-parenting, where ex-spouses were moving in with each other. Uh, then an article caught my eye out of China, and that article was about how the rates of divorce surged. So I began thinking about what types of questions that some of you might be facing. Life isn't perfect. For many of us, there are a number of legal issues that we're grappling with right now. So I decided that I would ask a friend of mine, he's a family and criminal attorney, if he could help us understand what the legal system is going through during the pandemic. And today's conversation, this is just an informational discussion. This isn't an attorney-client conversation. There's, uh, there's a lot of legal language that I don't know, but nothing today is about privilege. We're not going to necessarily be able to talk about your individual case. But rather, what we want to do is to look at what we can control, what we can't control and understand some of the things that are a little confusing for us. And at the end of today's conversation, my hope is that you feel less fear and less frustration. And so let me tell you about today's guest. Uh, my guest today is Jeff Simpson. Uh, Jeff earned his uh, law degree from the University of Toledo in 2005. Uh, Jeff opened his own practice where he's been working ever since. He believes that in starting his own practice, he could be more effective in helping people deal with a variety of legal issues. In 2008, Jeff founded the Simpson Law Office, and since then, he's represented numerous clients in both state and federal courts. The Simpson Law Office has allowed Jeff to fully realize his passion for helping people at all levels of litigation and protection. So a few weeks ago, I asked Jeff if he would help me out. He's a good friend of mine. And today, he decided that he would stop by the Better Together podcast. So we're going to bring him on out and say hello. Hey, Jeff, how you doing? Good, Brent. Barb, how are you? I am doing well. Welcome to Better Together. Thank you for entering the land of a lot of women. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, I wanted to bring you in because there are a number of confusing things that are happening in our world today. And some of the confusion is around the legal system. And so we're going to talk about that. But first, I was hoping that maybe so that our audience could get to know you better, I could ask you five very fast questions. Nothing scary, uh, but just something so that we can settle in. How you, you game for that? And let's do it. All righty. These are very easy. The very first one is wings or pizza? Pizza. The second is, what is the Netflix show that you're currently watching? Narcos. Uh, what do you miss most during the pandemic? I, I miss the gym. I miss going ah, to the gym. Gotcha. Uh, okay. This one, I do not. I, this could be the worst question in the world, but I'm going to ask it anyways. Tom Brady or Peyton Manning? Brady. Okay. And what was your first car? My first car was a 1983 Chevy Cavalier. Didn't Man. last long. 1983 Chevy Cavalier. 
Very classic. Fantastic. Well, we just wanted to kind of warm warm up the air as we started. Uh, if you are watching, you can go ahead, friends, and you can toss questions in the chat. Uh, looks like there's some folks that have already said hello. Hi, Crystal. Hi, Robin. Uh, Becca, hopefully you can hear us now. Uh, so Jeff, let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, for you, the pandemic has affected your life like everyone else. And so in your profession as an attorney, just at a high level, what are some of the things that have changed in your world? Well, right now, um, professionally, everything's put on hold with exception of very um, few hearings, nothing's actually happening. Um, in, in criminal defense, if there's an issue of constitutional time or a, a reason to get something done today, we're having video hearings or, or maybe in very limited aspects, bringing them in the courtroom. In the family law sense, really all that's happening right now is emergency hearings, if there is an actual need to be heard today. So that has gone, that, that has gone on unchanged. What has really stopped my practice is I'm not able to really do things for people now with exception of, of someone being in, in, in jail in custody or having an emergency situation, which are very limited circumstances. Uh, everyone else is kind of put on hold. We're starting to do some phone pre-trials. Some courts have got the ability to do limited hearings by Zoom. Um, the Ohio Supreme Court has allowed for grants. I know the Lucas County Domestic Relations Court is going to begin to do that in some disillusions and quick hearings to get some some divorces done. But otherwise, in anything contested, everything is on hold. Um, so we're kind of just not able to do much. Well, and actually, Carrie Ann just asked that question. It's on the screen here. She was asking, are pre-trial hearings postponed? It would, Carrie Ann, it would depend very much on the case, the court and the judge. Um, I think each of each of the judges has been given a wide berth to determine how they are going to um, administer their docket. I will tell you that the Ohio Supreme Court has suspended the rules of superintendents and has allowed cases to go on without time being told. Uh, when in, in any kind of case pending, the Supreme Court has set down mandates for when it believes that the case should be over. Those are off now. The time has stopped. The clock has stopped. Um, so Carrie Ann, Pre-trials are being held in some instances, not all instances and not all cases. If we don't need to hear something, I'm just speaking very generally, if we don't need to hear something right now, chances are we're not going to hear it. I will tell you that in my criminal defense practice, all pre-trials, uh, with, with very, very few exceptions, are being put on hold until this is over. Uh, in the criminal defense, we really want... Uh, defendants, law enforcement to be there for pretrials, and we can't effectuate a meaningful pretrial by telephone like you wouldn't be able to in a civil or family situation. So, in we're going to walk more in a little bit more detail on some specific COVID related matters with court cases. Uh, on a day to day for you, how has this changed the kinds of phone calls that you're now getting from clients? And I'm asking this question because, like, folks like Carrie Ann are like, there's something that she's waiting on. So, what are people calling about now? And what are some of the fears that that people have now that things are slow or postponed? The calls haven't changed. My response has. The okay. need remains. I, I am not able to do that which I want to do, which is to bring resolution to my client's uh, issue or to get the matter resolved. I can't do that right now. So when they call, if, if a woman or a man calls me and is seeking a divorce, I can go and file the divorce, no problem. We can have the filing fee. It will be issued by a check. We will have this, the, the um, schedules filled out and notarized. And I'm going to drop it in a box. And then you may not hear from me for about eight weeks. Um, in normal circumstances, it'd be about four or six weeks, we'd have some movement, but we're not even going to begin to do anything meaningful, uh, really until June, maybe even July, depending on, on, on whose schedule you're looking at. So <clears throat> the calls are the same. The need has, has remained. I think that article from China has, has kind of highlighted some issues in, in interpersonal relationship with being, you know, hunkered down and staying home. So the need remains. 
our hands are tied as private attorneys and as the judiciary uh, because we cannot get done that which we want to do. We cannot bring matters to resolution. So we can get things started and that's all we can do. And until then, you're going to have to wait. I have a few clients that are, that are, and rightfully so in their circumstances, very uh, nervous about or, or anxious about getting these matters done. When is court even going to open? And to that, I have no, I have no answer even to that. In, in some instances, uh, we don't even know when, when the court will open for regular business. Um, so, Part of one of the uh, inspirations for this conversation, in addition to those news articles, uh, there's a, a group of divorce care that I lead. And um, I, there were some concerns that time would equal a bad outcome, like a delay could equal a bad outcome. Could you speak to that? There was this fear that if things didn't keep moving, um, somewhere in that uncertainty was space for lots and lots of just what if this happens and what if that happens so how do we manage our expectations and our fears while we're waiting no one is more sensitive from my perspective uh, to this instance than are the judges who, who who monitor their own dockets nothing or or things ought not fall through the cracks what i think maybe their their concern would be in a, in a general way would be to say I don't want to be forgotten about. That isn't going to happen. Okay. People who take the position of a judge, take the public leadership positions, do so to answer a call, uh, as all of us lawyers have. So they will not be forgotten. You will not be put on the back burner. We have to do things safely. And you'll know, I mean, at least here in, in, in Lucas County, the first the first loss we had was a was a lawyer. Was, a, was someone who practiced in Lucas County Domestic Relations Court, very good, very well-respected attorney. And so it's hit, it hit home for a lot of us. It really made this very real and has really made our next steps have to be one of safety and one of concern for the public mm. uh, in, in those mm. civil matters. So if they're concerned they're gonna be forgotten about, they won't. Silence isn't necessarily the result of someone not listening. In this instance, it's because we don't have anything else to say. That's actually something worth repeating, that silence doesn't mean that someone isn't listening. As I think that that seems to be a fear that uh, that things are forgotten. It's just that it's just silence right now. So that's, that's very good. Uh, Robin had a question and her question, I'll put it on the screen. She, and I think you might've started touching on this. She said, when you turn in your dissolution papers, what time frame do you think we're looking at due to the virus? Robin, when we talk about dissolution, we clearly know that it is a contractual matter you and your husband have made to dissolve the divorce through a new contract, through dissolving that contract. The marriage contract will be now dissolved, which is the root word for dissolution, through this new filing. In most circumstances, it was six weeks. I will tell you that clock from the Ohio Supreme Court has been stopped, has been suspended. Um, they are beginning here in Lucas County, and I think the Supreme Court from Ohio is helping them with uh, funding to get this done, to begin to redo that and get back on that schedule. Um, I can't be clear clear uh robin with 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 when your case will be heard i can't imagine it will go on too much longer um in like i said in normal circumstance circumstances it's six weeks from the date of filing roughly um in this case it might be eight or even nine weeks to your initial hearing the court wants to get you you you, you know serve your serve your needs serve your filing and they're going to do so in a way that may be creative it may ask you to get on a zoom uh, call. Um, it may ask you to do things a little bit more creatively than we have in the past, but you you will be heard. Your your matter will be resolved. It may just take a touch longer than it normally would. Well, the dissolution case, example, go ahead. The dissolution sorry. case. No, please finish. Example of a non-conflict matter. The when parties file the dissolution, they're in agreement that they're marriage ought to be terminated so that's the type of case where the the court can say yes let's get this done with over zoom we know this is what the parties want we can kind of craft our response in a creative and meaningful way without having um another attorney object or or have motion practice or all that kind of 
a contentious thing in a normal divorce would happen. So disillusion cases, easy things like that, not easy, but, but relatively non-confrontational matters like that, I think are going to be start being heard by the various courts so they at least can clear those things off their docket and bring resolution to the petitioners. Yeah, just a little TV timeout. Um, what has the virus done to the docket? Everything stopped. Everything has stopped. Um, wow. No one there really to, uh, I mean, the clerk, the clerk staff upon who a lot of our lawyers rely heavily upon for our filings, uh, they're down to a skeleton crew. Yeah. Um, criminal matters are proceeding if the defendant is in custody. If not, what those of us in criminal defense bar have been doing is been what you know we refer to as waiving time, just to say take off that that speedy trial right. You know, stop that clock so we can get moving on this on a more convenient basis. Really, it's those emergency situations and the in custody defendants that the courts around you know around us are are really dealing with right now. Nothing outside of that. Everything else, it doesn't matter what someone is charged with. If they're not in custody, they're kicking the case out till June or July. Okay, that is helpful to know. There was a question submitted uh, about uh, grand jury hearings. I don't know if that butts up against criminal matters, uh, no. but will grand jury hearings also, it sounds like June-ish, July-ish? Well, to what I understand um, here locally, grand, the grand jury is still meeting. It's just not meeting every day. It's meeting a couple times a week. Um, I think the prosecuting, the prosecutors around here, from my experience, are being quite judicious as to what matters are being presented uh, to the grand jury. What matters can be can wait until this stuff is until this this pandemic is over. I do believe they are still meeting, um, but it would depend on the case about whether or not it's being heard right now. All right. Well, friends, if you're just joining, I am talking with family and criminal attorney Jeff Simpson about how the COVID virus has impacted our legal system. Uh, I've got some questions in the comments, and so we will get to those in a moment. Uh, one of the things that struck me was you mentioned that the first uh, casualty in our county, in Lucas County, I know there are folks who are listening to this all over, um, but it was an attorney, and so that made things hit home. Um, that that feels pretty profound as far as how seriously the legal system takes the coronavirus. Um, for you, when you think about your day-to-day -day just being at work, uh, how has just the day-to-day, -day, do clients still come in? Or are you doing everything by phone? How does that change your actual workday? I'm doing a lot by phone and by email. Um, I prefer email and written down uh, messages better uh, than the phone, um, but we are meeting by phone. I've had a few very limited, very limited meetings with clients uh, in my office um, in order to go over paperwork that was concerning, concerning to them. We were able to do one deposition by video um, and, that was, and that was fine. Uh, it's just the in-person connection right now is kind of taking a, a time out, so to speak. So yeah. that so, aspect of my hasn't, hasn't, uh, hasn't gone on. Okay. Well, a couple of questions. Uh, there is one question from Carrie Ann, and she said, with COVID going on, can that be used against someone with a parenting schedule if both parents are essential? and they don't have any child care. So it sounds like she might be in a situation where someone is, where her sp spouse, ex-spouse, where there's conflict, um, she doesn't want that used against her in a case. I have seen, I think we all have seen on social media, uh, aspects of judges using essential status of parents against, against them. I would. I was shocked when I read those articles. I will tell you that if any party, in, in personal opinion, any party uses COVID nineteen as a, against their co-parent, uh, any magistrate or judge is going to have a very hard time with that action. Uh, the I can tell you that the initial orders from from Dr. Acton, 
the director of health here in Ohio specifically spoke to the idea that that custody orders and divorce orders were not to be suspended, that they were supposed to go back and forth. I can't speak about other other states. I haven't read their orders, but I know here in Ohio, we were told from day one that would not happen. So I would be very nervous to represent a client who um, had manipulated the pandemic to take time away from the other person. I will also say that the court right now, if it could speak to us, would tell us we need to work together. We're hearing we need to work together on on TV concerts on ABC sponsored by Pepsi. We need we need to work together on 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 um, TV commercials with McDonald's. If the court could could yell at us through our television sets and through our iPads, it will tell us we need to work together too. So if if you're going to use this against somebody else, that is going to be a bad day for you when that finally com comes comes to fruition or comes back at you. Oh yeah, work together. Uh, it, speaking of that, what are some of the things that listeners now can do in this space to work together with their attorneys? Uh, I don't know if you want to approach this from a please don't do this or a please do this, but um, I, I know that having that feeling of lack, lack of control, that feeling of being forgotten, it might uh, create a drive to do some unhelpful things. So what are unhelpful things that you would advise against doing and maybe a few helpful things that your clients could do or clients could do to help their attorneys out? Firstly, you have to understand none of us are, are built for this. Those of us who are in the legal profession are very much built for the idea that I'm going to get something done for my people today, and we can't do that. We can't find solutions for them. The number one thing to keep in mind when dealing with, with us right now is to understand we really don't know how long it's going to go on, what the court wants from us until it tells us, and what's going to happen with your case until we get to somebody who has ears. So just be patient would be the number one thing I would tell everyone is just allow this to, to run its course. Stay in contact with your attorney through phone and through uh, email or letter, however you communicate, and just realize that he or she is doing all they can to rectify and resolve your matter. They're just unable to do much right now. There's a lot that goes into litigation that the clients don't see. Um, and I don't know that you want to see how that particular sausage is made, but just do realize that we are working for you. We are trying to get these matters resolved the best way we know how. You know, just we can't do much right now. All right. Ginger's question it is, uh, and I don't know if you can answer this or not, but she said, my ex sent a letter to terminate alimony last week. Will other matters be taken before a case like this? Will other matters be taken before a case like this if he takes this to court? You know, I think you have to remember the court does things. It doesn't really schedule things on matters that it feels is important. It schedules things as they come in so whenever that matter for the alimony termination be it early or not whether he's got a change in circumstances or he doesn't they will take that as it comes they once it's open for business it's open back again and then you know they'll they will take it on its normal schedule it will not be during this time where they do things on or, or may not be during the time where it's going to be on zoom i very highly doubt any jurisdiction is going to have a contested hearing um, by video. Um, I think they're going to want you in the courthouse for that. Certainly the termination of, of spousal support or alimony would be one that I would believe would be contested quite, quite uh, vehemently by the um, opposing party. So when that matter is filed, they'll take it once the court reopens. They may be trying to get the docket out of matters that are 
more set up for the, the Zoom um, procedure, more set up for the video procedure, but that's not a reflection of your matter, Ginger. It's a reflection of we can do this now, let's do it and kind of lessen our load for once the summer hits, it's gonna be, it's gonna be pretty, uh, pretty fast. Things are gonna be happening Sounds pretty quick. Sounds like it. Well, Carrie, I've got time for a few more questions. And so if you've got any others, we've got time for a couple more. Uh, Carrie was asking, uh, it looks like um, she has, uh, co-parenting is just really hard right now. And uh, the case is pending. It, she can't really do anything about the case, but she's having a hard time with co-parenting. What are some suggestions that you have if, uh, if we really can't get to court and, but things are just really hard. I would refer you back to your attorney, make sure they know everything. If that means keeping a journal and recording everything as it happens, so be it. If that means emailing them a couple days a week as to here's the newest, the newest um, information, we'll do that. I would say in litigation, information truly is power. The more information and the more information you, you empower your attorney with, the better argument they can make on your behalf. So right now, if this is nothing more than you writing things down as they occur to you in real time or when you have the chance to do so, that's powerful information and powerful evidence. Um, specifically, I think I saw that question come up on the bottom. It was a very specific question to you, Carrie. Um, I don't know if I can answer that in this forum. You might want to contact me later. I'm more than happy to take care of that kind of off the air, so to speak. That seemed to be a rather uh, separate matter altogether. All right, Robin asked, once it's final, how how do they, I'm, I don't know if it's the courts or what have you, enforce an agreement like alimony? Um, I'm not sure the context, but uh, I think the folks have questions about how do you even make sure things are gonna get done? Here is, here is what you have to remember. When a, when a divorce is final, that is law. It may only bind husband and wife, but it's no different than any other law we have that says don't run a stop sign, don't go over 55. It just it only binds the party's name to the agreement. Here in, in Ohio, you can and often we do run spousal support through the Child Support Enforcement Agency, an executive branch agency that's, that administers uh, support mostly for child support, but they will take spousal support and they will take cases when there's only spousal support and no child. If the court, if someone is not paying their support, often what we do is we file what's known as a motion to show cause, which is a, a motion filed with the court alleging that the other party has violated the language of the, of the consent judgment entry or other court order and asking for sanctions against them. That could include jail time, that could include attorney's fees, that could include financial penalties, it could include the loss of custody depending on the circumstances. Um, so the court enforces its orders by almost every means it can in any way it can can do that, but it has to know what's going on. Thusly, if if you feel that the other party has violated the consent judgment entry or the final decree of divorce, the proper remedy is to let the court know. Okay. All right. So Robin said yes. So it looks like she found the information she was looking for. So. Well, that was a lot of very helpful information. So uh, Jeff, do you have anything else, any uh, bit of encouragement, uh, any last bit of advice that you would like to share with the audience before we wrap up today's episode? I know you all are struggling as, as we all are. The, the best thing we can do right now is, is try and find some peace, try and find some patience, understand that truth and right will prevail, health will prevail in this matter. Uh, those of us who can are trying very hard to help you. You are in our minds. We got into this profession to help people. We got into this profession to find answers for, for, for people. And those of us who are in the people business, who are in the, in the represent professional industry, we are thinking of you. We are here for you. Um, we just, we need your patience right now. Great last word. So, well, Jeff, thank you for dropping by this episode of the Better Together podcast. And uh, friends, if you are listening and today's information was helpful to you, uh, this podcast will be up on YouTube. It'll also be a blog at barbruce.com. Join me on Tuesdays and Fridays for Better Together. And until the next time, have a great evening and I'll see you soon, friends. Good night.